All right, so welcome to part four of our Croc 2 2015 booklet. All right, so let's kindly begin. So, against the background of angina, a patient has developed pain in the tubular bones. Pain in the tubular bones. Examination revealed generalized enlargement of lymph nodes. Hepatolenal syndrome, stenalgia. In the blood, we have this thrombocytes that WBC that look at the presence of blast 87%. And we've already established countless number of times that when blood cells are more than 5% in the bone marrow, it is an indication of what? Of a cancer. So over here, we are looking at a, a case of what? Leukemia. We are looking at a case of leukemia, acute leukemia, to be specific, acute leukemia. And again, depending on the cell type that is predominant, you can tell whether it is of uh, the lymphocyte origin or it is of the myeloid origin. These things we have discussed it in uh, previous videos. So please do well to get in touch with those uh, videos. So again, having a blast of 87% is a sign of what? Acute leukemia, acute leukemia. So your answer here is A, acute leukemia. All right. For a long time to eradicate weeds on agricultural lands, herbicides retaining in the environment have been used point out the most probable way of herbicide reaching human organism from the soil. They've already told you from the soil. Herbicides are more of like what? Uh, they are plants, isn't it? They are plants, herbicide. They are plants. Now, if these things are, I mean, they are of plant origin. Good. So if these are of plant origin, how do they get to reach we human beings? So definitely you are looking at what? Uh, from the soil, plants, and then to what? To human beings. So soil, plants, and then human beings. So here, your answer will be what? Will be C. No two ways about that. All right. A 32 year old patient complains of pain in the right part of her chest. There is dyspnea, there is cough with a lot of albuminoid sputum, emitting foul smell of talked about a uh, foul smell coming out from the lungs area. We've talked about them. Now there's what? There's mid loops. Please, can someone call Alphonse to join in? Now the patient's condition is grave. I, when I saw mid loops, I remember Alphonse. That's why I mentioned his name. <laughs> the patient's condition is grave. Cyanosis is observed. Breathing rate is 31 per minute. Percussion sound above the right lung is shortened. Auscultation revealed various moist rows. What is the most probable diagnosis? So, like I said earlier on, there's a accumulation of what fluid, isn't it, inside the lungs? And to talk of uh, this kind of sputum emitting out, I made you guys understand that there are some basic, uh, how do you call it, differentials that you always have to look out for especially when it is coming out with a foul smell, with a foul smell to specific meat slopes. Now, the differential diagnosis is usually between a pulmonary abscess and a pulmonary gangrene. A pulmonary abscess, abscess and a pulmonary gangrene. These are the two most important differentials that you always have to look out for. Now, what would differentiate between the two? For us, it is... The, the, the sputum, the sputum, the sputum. Now, in cases of uh, pulmonary gangrene, the sputum is always smelly or it has an odor. Let me put it that way. It has an odor and it is made up of a grayish brown or a grayish green color. Again, it is, uh, it has a foul smell and it has a grayish brown or a grayish green substance or color. So that is one of the 
distinguishing feature for uh, a lung gangrene or a pulmonary gangrene. Now, in abscess, in an abscess, it does not come with an appreciable odor. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come with what? Any appreciable what odor. And again, the color of the sputum is usually whitish yellow or mucopurulent or purulent. You know these things, purulent, purulent. Uh-huh. So these are the two differentials that you always have to look out for anytime we are having what? Uh, sputum exploration uh, coupled with a foul smell. Great. So over here, you're looking at what? You're looking at a pulmonary what? Gangrene, also known as a lung gangrene. Lung could be the same as what? Pulmonary. So the answer here is B. All right. Now, a five-year-old patient suffers from headache, nasal hemorrhage, sense of lower extremity coldness. Shoulder, muscles of the shoulder girdle are developed. Guys, look at it. Too. The muscles of the shoulder girdle are developed the lower extremities are hypotrophied. Pulsation on the pedal and the femoral arteries is sharply dampened. BP is 150-90. Good. Look at it. The BP is 150 But on the legs, we have 90-60. So who can tell me the answer? We've done this before. Who can tell me what it is? What are you looking yeah. at for? Plantation. Plantation. Thank you. Thank you. As simple as that. So this is what iota or iotic, iotic quotation. And again, where does it normally occur? It occurs close to the, how do you call this thing? Uh, the ductus arteriosus. And after the, the act, you know, when you, you know, when you have the, I don't I'm not good with drawing, but we'll have the iotic act like this. We are having this uh, subclavian, uh, arteries thereabouts and things like that, and we have sorry, and we have the ductus arteriosus somewhere here. So, this concentration of iota is actually taking place around this area, however, it can also take place after the ductus. That's why we have two types of uh concentration of iota we have the preductal and then the post ductal. That is just by the way, but basically. Your answer is correct. So we are looking at what? At aortic coquetation. So your answer here is E. Is E. Is E. All right. A patient with a first bite of both feet was delivered to an, to an admission ward. What action should be taken? What action should be taken? This person has what? A first bite. First bite. First bite. That's more or less like a... Uh, freezing, if I'm if I'm correct, yeah, you are freezing. Those in you, I mean, those who have used to your all the time in Ukraine, you can relate to this much better. If you go out without putting on the uh, an ear covering, you wear that the tip of your ear becomes so cold, right? <laughs> exactly. So that's more of it like the a frost bite. Mm-hmm. So then the action as patient came to you with the with both feet having this kind of condition, what action should be taken? I know most of you will be tempted to use hot water, but hot water is too aggressive. Okay? It is too what, aggressive. You have to do it gradually. So first of all, you have to kind of apply some sort of what, insulate. That's why you have to cover your ear, isn't it? So you have to apply some, some sort of what, an insulator. So basically from the option, we can choose to apply what, a bandage, but not to tie, tie, tie. No. <laughs> No, just just seven as an insulator, isn't it? Then you now introduce a vasodilating what medication. You now introduce a vasodilation what medication. That is what we do when people are having what a frost bite. But they don't go for straight away hot water. No, 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 no. You're going to cause more harm than good. So with the option here, that's what we're going to what, do. In the case of people in Ukraine, for instance, that's why sometimes you have to open your you know, every wall has a, a heater. I mean, Ukrainian room, they have heaters. You have to open so that it can warm you up very well. But for you to be very fast, you have to, I mean, at a hospital, you have to use this kind of thing. So the answer is E. All right. <laughs> Just imagine this option. 
to rub your feet with the snow. Only few people do that. A patient in a clinical death, <laughs> in a clinical death condition, is being resuscitated through a mouth-to-mouth -mouth artificial pulmonary ventilation. Don't this this like I said, trying to give uh, his crush a mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilation because the person is drowning. Now lie. An external yes. cardiac massage. A doctor noticed that <laughs> air does not flow into the patient's airway and his head and the torso are positioned at the same level. They are positioned at the same level. Why is artificial respiration not effective in the given case? Guys, look at it. They've told you that you are trying to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilation, okay? But what happened? The air is not entering. So if the air is not entering, definitely it means what? There's a blockage somewhere. And that is why we say in every emergency case, what do you normally do? You do your A, B, C. You do what? Your A, B, C. In every case, you do what? Your A, B, C. So now, of course, the airway is not, airway is not only by your nostrils, isn't it? It can also be by your mouth. And in this case, they want to give the mouth to mouth. So they want to give that which ventilation via the mouth sorry via the mouth so definitely what could be a hindrance or what could block air entering of course tank retraction tank retraction that is serving as an obstruction to the airflow to the respiratory system so from the option here definitely we are looking at at a tank retraction tank retraction tank retraction all right, so here your answer is what is A. And don't forget, you are doing what? A mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. So please don't forget that. Mouth to mouth. All right. Then if you have done it, send it to me. Hygienic assessment of a sample taken from the batch of grain revealed 2% of grains infected with uh, microscopic Fusarium fungi. We talked about this before. On the grounds of laboratory analysis, this batch of grain should be. So, anyone can answer it for me. Is there any toxicity when it comes to this fungi? No. 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 So that no. means it can no. be so great. So it can be sold without any what restriction. As a matter of fact, a lot of food that we take in contains this fungi. <laughs> Very proteinous. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, it can be sold without any restrictions. All right. Now, resident of an industrial... Guys, sorry I'm going too fast, but I'm enjoying myself. Resident of an industrial community situated near a plant suffer from increased morbidity rate, that means disease rate, caused by a nervous and endocrine system conditions and kidney diseases. Blood test shows... Guys, look at the blood test dihydric groups in the blood. Now, the pathologies developed can be caused by the following being polluted by the following enzymes. So definitely, if they are thinking that there's a decreased level of this uh, uh, sulfahydric compound, what comes to your mind is what? Uh, 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 that it's a competition in the hemoglobin level. Okay, or hemoglobin level is going to be what? To be affected because every hemoglobin, every hemoglobin Contains some content of what this uh, sulfahydric compound. It has it. It has this uh, compound. So, and one thing that can be competitive, or that can also take up these uh, functional groups, are mercury. They are what mercury. So mercury is able to take up uh, some of these, or can bond. So it's it's just like taking in uh, carbon monoxide. You know, we know that uh, a hemoglobin loves oxygen, isn't it? But one thing, to, hemoglobin loves oxygen. But in the case where there's deficiency of oxygen, what, what happens? It begins to bind to what? Other what, substances, causing a whole lot of what? Problems in our system. So, this uh, uh, mercury also has some sort of an affinity for this uh, dihydric, so, uh, dihydric compounds or group of or functional groups. They are actually functional groups. 
All right. So here you're looking at what? At A. You're looking at A. All right. So if you are enjoying this, remember to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any video that we post over here. Okay. Various population groups' mortality has been studied for a long time. Territorial distribution of population and resulting changes in mortality trends are considered. Trends. Guys, so your keyword here is what? Trends. What statistical method can be applied? So you want to what? check the death rate over a long period of time. That's the question. You want to check the death rate of a population over a long period of what? Of time in a particular what um territory or let me say area okay because you want to see the trend the mortality trend the death rate trend why people are dying why do you understand you want to know what sort i mean what disease is actually causing those kind of death and usually because you're going to do uh for a long time to check for the kind of thing we call it what the time series analysis time series analysis and this time series analysis is just a statistical technique that deals with time series data or trend analysis trend analysis and uh, i'm sure Golo can tell us more about trends isn't it when you get to know that oh now this song is hitting it's trending I mean, it's now taking some time. It's now beginning to trend and things like that. So we call it what? the time series what? analysis. Okay. So Galo could tell us more about it in future. So please, just take note. We are dealing with what? A long period of something to know the cause of something or to know why people are even dying. So you do what? The time series analysis. So yeah, here, your answer is D. All right. So a 45-year-old patient with urolithiasis had an attack of renal colic. So urolithiasis, that means what? Uh, 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 stones in the what? In the urinary tract, isn't it? Now, what is the mechanism of the attack development? What is the mechanism? Of course, when there is stones or when there's calculi inside your urinary tract, what will happen? Who can tell me what will happen when you have a stone inside your your, your urinary tract. What will happen? There will be disturbed urinary flow. There will be definitely uh, obstruction of urine flow. There will be obstruction. And so therefore, you're looking at this as what? As a disturbed urine outflow from the kidney because something is blocking it. Obstruction. Obstruction. So your answer is what? You see. So a 26-year-old woman has attended maternity center complaining of her inability to become pregnant despite three years of regular sexual life or sex life. Examination revealed the following. There's an increased body weight. There's a male-type pubic hair. Excessive pylosis of the thighs. Ovaries are dense and enlarged. Basal body temperature is monophasic. Who can tell me the normal ba basal body temperature of every woman? It's what? It's what? Biphasic. Thank you. It's what what biphasic. But here we have what? A monophasic. So this is a classic for which syndrome or for what disease? POS. Because. Because. Oh, you are too good. So this is what because polycystic ovarian syndrome, polycystic ovarian syndrome, another name for polycystic ovarian syndrome is what is sclerocytosis or Stein Leventhal syndrome. Stein Leventhal, Leventhal syndrome, Stein Leventhal syndrome. You see, and they've told you everything that is here. Pylosis means what? A, a excessive growth of hair. In some books, they will say uh, hirsutism, isn't it? They will mention it. And they are telling you the person is even what? Increase body weight again. You know, please, this one, don't worry yourself too much. Your answer is absolutely correct. Picos or sclerocystosis. Sclero, sclerocystosis. All right. So your answer is D. It's D. 
please, if you are new and are confused, please do well to watch our videos on Ops and Gaini. Ops and Gaini, it is there. We've discussed it. A workshop resident doctor makes a list of workers who are, who are often ill. Okay, for special supervision, he takes into account the number of etiological con etiologically connected cases resulting in temporary disability that occurred in the span of a year for each worker. How many such cases should a worker have to be included in this group? Guys, how many or under what condition, okay, are they going to classify you as a temporarily disabled? Please, who can tell me? At what level? Four more. Four, Four more. more. That means your condition is now chronic. And if you have disease, I mean, if you have illness okay, four more times, it is enough for us to say that, guy, you are sick. <laughs> it is enough for us to say you are what? You are sick. So if you have four or more, you will come what? Put into that group of people or temporarily dis uh, disabled or disability people. So over here, you are looking at what? Four or more or four and more. Four and more. Usually it is what? It is chronic and it is what? In a decompensation state. When we say decompensation state, that means your body can no longer uh, compromise or can no longer protect you, okay, from the disease because now it has used all its defensive or protective mechanisms. Now it is now uh, rendered useless, so it cannot more protect you. That's why you have a lot of infection or disease. So the answer is what is B, is B, is B. All right. A 28 year old woman complains of increased intermenstrual period up to two months. You see, I mentioned some, I mentioned something. Uh, 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 is it pylosis? Yes. And now we have what? Hesutism. Now, I'm going to the nation revealed that the ovaries were enlarged, painless, compact, uterus had no peculiarities. Ultrasound revealed that the ovaries were four to five centimeters in diameter and had multiple enlarged follicles. On the, now, X-ray is showing that the X-ray of the skull base showed cellular region was dilated. What is the most probable diagnosis? What is the most... Ladies and gentlemen, what are you thinking about? We've done this. What is it? The same. The same. The same. <laughs> Just put and twist it in a different way to confuse you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about what? Stan Leventhal syndrome or polycystic ovarian syndrome or uh, 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 cystosis. Please. Medicine is sweet. And what condition do we have? Shehan syndrome. This goes to Uche. And what condition do we have? Shehan syndrome. Bleeding. 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 Thank you. You guys are. Exactly. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You, you guys, your knowledge is too much. I think I have to start sitting down so you guys will start teaching us. Hey. A woman consulted <laughs> a woman consulted the therapist about fatigability, significant weight loss, weakness, loss of appetite. She has been having amenorrhea for the past eight months. A year ago. Please, please. Somebody's uh, uh, this is open. Just mute it. A year ago, she born a full term. Guys, look at it. Hemorrhage during labor made up to what? Two liters. She got blood and blood substitution transfusion. What is the most probable diagnosis? What are you thinking about? We've answered it already, isn't it? Yeah. The answer is what? She has. She has. She has. Thank you. You see, everything is making sense, Abby. It's sweet though. Hmm. The answer is A. All right. The correlation between this is, uh, uh, I know this is a favorite question for, for somebody like Fifi. The correlation between service record and uh, eosinophils concentration in the blood was studied in workshops at dying shops of a textile factory. What index will be the most informative for the analysis of this data? For analysis of this data, look at it. Correlation between 
service record and it's not first concentration. So what are you thinking about, guys? Correlation factor. Correlation factor. That's <laughs> about correlation. Hey, now you guys. <clears throat> I don't know. Anyways, talk about correlation with factors. Now, when there is a positive value, what does it mean? What does a positive value signify? A positive value will signify that indeed. Really? Exactly. Exactly. And a negative value signifies that there is no what link. And again, depending on whichever side it is, we can have the numbers close to 10. I mean, close to one means that the correlation is very strong. Uh huh. I just chip in this so that we know what, what we are talking about. I didn't get that, sir. All right, what I mean is this if you have, assuming this is a correlation coefficient that we are looking at for, you know, is this a graph? Okay, this is a graph. And over here, we have the zero point or the zero pointer. To this side, negative values. To this side, positive values. Now, if the value is close to one, this is one, this is negative one. If the value is close to one, it means the correlation is what? First, it is positive and strong. Okay? If correlation is to the negative side and it is close to the one, it means it is inverse. It is inverse and it is strong. Now, when, it, when it's getting closer to zero, it means the correlation is weak. That's what I just said. As simple as that. And there will be a question like that in future to come or in one of our presentations. So take note of this thing. All right. So here, the answer is what? Correlation factor, as simple as A, B, C, D. Now, a 39-year-old woman suffering from schizophrenia constantly strains her Strains, eh? Strains. What am I saying? Strains what? Constantly strains. Hear something insisting that. Eh, is it a hard? Eh? <laughs> okay, strains to hear. Okay, it is strains to hear. There's two somewhere here. Strains to hear something insisting that there is a phone connection in her brain. Interesting. <laughs> a phone connection in her brain and she hears her brother's voice demanding that she come back home. The patient is anxious, suspicious, constantly looking around. Specify this pathological what? Syndrome. Guys, what are you looking at for? This person is what? Hallucinating. You are what? I mean, the person is what? Hallucinating. There is delusion. Delusion. This person is what? Hallucinating. So please, this is what? Hallucination, hallucination. Usually, it's secondary to what? Schizophrenia. Hallucination, hallucination. And hallucination simply means, or it is the perception of having seen, heard, touched, tasted, or smelled something that was not actually what there. Aha. Uh -huh. So sometimes you'll be there, thinking that you have seen your brother standing in front of you. Me, your brother is nowhere there. That is what hallucinating. That's hallucination. So the answer here is what is B. Is B. A three months old girl has rhinitis, dyspnea, and dry cough. That's respiratory infection, isn't it? Now she has been sick for two days. Objectively, the skin is pale, acrocinosis, uh, hypopnea, breathing rate is 80. Over the whole pulmonary surface, there is a bandbox resonance or vesicular tympanic sound. Observed with the numerous bubbling, bubbling reels, the most likely diagnosis is what? This child or this girl is what? Three months old. What is the most common uh, respiratory tract infection in children? Guys. Okay. Bronchitis. 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 And it is caused by what? Respiratory syncytia what? Virus. Respiratory since this year, what virus and they've given you a history that the person have what an upper respiratory what disease, rhinitis, dyspnea, dry cough. So, over here, you are looking at what a case of uh, acute bronchiolitis three months, three months, three months old. So, here you are looking at what at a as 
your likely uh, answer. A 30 year old patient was hospitalized in an intensive care unit with diagnosis of multiple bee stings. Skin is pale and covered with cold sweats. Pores can be palpated only at the carotid arteries and is 110. Breathing is 24. Redemica weakened. What drug should be given? Guys, straight up, you have to. This person is in what? In anaphylactic shock due to the multiple bee stings. So, what do you give? Adrenaline. Adrenaline. Exactly. Intravenously. Yes, intravenously. Thank you. It because it works very fast. That, if you, yes. Not about then. There's a little confusion. I had this argument with some people in my class. Then, in what case is prednisolone given? Good. So, prednisolone is given as an immune suppressant. Prednisolone is so. So, in this case, yes. After giving, now don't forget. We want to save the... Look at it, too. They said the pores can be palpated only at the carotid what, arteries, and it's, what, 110. Now, what, do, what all of these things is trying to tell us is that we have to, first of all, safeguard... Look at the breathing. We have to make sure that the circulatory <laughs> system is intact or the cardiovascular system is, what, intact first before you start thinking of other things again. But, of course, you can also give, what, prednisolone. But prednisolone is for what, immune... So... Eventually, after giving an adrenaline, definitely you have to go on and also give what the penicillin because this is also what uh, an immune what suppressant that can suppress the reaction for the person. But for now, we want to stabilize the person as soon as possible. So for now, we are going with what an adrenaline intravenously. So your answer here is C. All right. Please, I have a question. Can we finish then so that we can all bring it in? Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Because there's a question like this okay. that says what pregnancy long. So. Eh. Please yes. look for the question for me, I beg. Which Dr. Ba. Yes. I think it was 2009. Okay. I'll look for it. Question 136. Yeah. That yeah. one was also complicated with face edema. Uh-huh. Great. Be stand with face edema. Face yeah, edema. Face edema. Uh -huh. Good. So you see, so now this has to do with what's more of a, don't worry, you let me finish all of these things. Okay, we'll come back to it. So this is what C. Okay. Please search for that question for me and I am put on the group page. I'll look at it again. I'll read the question so that we can get a better understanding. I want to look at the whole question. Now, that is Lawrence, right? Good. Lawrence, yes, is you? Sir. Uh -huh. look for the question. A 24-year-old patient complains of gaining body mass, gaining, and has increased appetite. Objectively, uh, the person is built with hypersthenic type. Body mass index is 32.2. And you know that body mass index is used to determine the type of what, obesity, isn't it? Now, weight to circumference is 100. Uh, waist to hips circumference ratio is 0 0.9. What is the provisional diagnosis what is the provisional diagnosis so now you ask yourself i've discussed uh bmi with you guys before and guess what people who did croc i mean who did gmdc exams i mean orals or viva they call it viva in ghana orals they had a question on what bmi and i and i did a presentation on some of the questions they should they will likely face most of them think i was joking when they went there about half of the questions I gave them were there. <laughs> so those who took it serious, it helped them. Those who didn't, they'll be like, had I known? Okay. Like they would say, it's the same of a fool. I mean, sorry, but then that's just how it is. So that's it by the way. Now let's look at uh, BMI. I've already discussed it with you guys in the previous video. But then for the benefit of revision, we have... Uh, uh, now if BMI is 25, now normal is less than 25. If you have a normal, if your body is your body weight is normal, it should be less than what 25. Okay. Now, if you have 25 to 29.9, we term it as overweight, but not obesity, it's overweight. Mm -hmm. Now, stage one. Now, stage one obesity is when the BMI is 30 to 34.9. 30 
What am I saying? Yes. And so if the is 30 to 34.9, we have what? The stage one. Now, stage two, we have BMI to be what? 35 to 39.9. And stage three is when you have BMI to be more than what? 40. Uh-huh. To be more than what? 40. Now we're having what? 33.3. So by 33.3, this can be grouped into what type? Guys, what type? Stage one. Stage one. Exactly. So this is what? Stage one. This is stage one. Now, they've even given you another clue again that this person has been gaining weight and has had what? An increased appetite. That is what? Food. Alimentary. So that means the pathogenesis has to do with what? With alimentary uh, means by weight gain. Okay. So again, you know it is what stage one, and you know this is what alimentary, alimentary. That is foodie, <laughs> foodie. So even without even knowing what an android or a genoid or whatever thing is, you definitely know that this is definitely what alimentary uh, constituent obesity stage one. It's not really really android type, but I don't know why they said it is what android type, but it's not really what android type. Now when we say android type. Now, an android type means that there's a fat distribution, okay? Usually around what, the buttocks. Usually around the buttocks and the upper part of the, shall I say the waist or the upper, the upper part of the body, okay? That is, to, to see this, what, an android type, an android type. But I don't think this is, uh, you know, I don't think this is more like it. I don't think it's more like it. All right. But it's not to be quoted anyway. But this is A. This is A. I mean, Dr. Hey, Boy, I'm Sorry? I'm saying that question, it says something about the waist to hip ratio. Yes. Zero okay. Point nine. So that means big. the hips are bigger than the it's waist. Big. So. It's big. Exactly. So, so this says Android. Good, 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 good. So this, this also comes to confirm it. 0 0.9. I don't know that, but I think it's... Close to one. I mean, from yeah. normal um, mathematics, if it's more than one, it means the waist is bigger than the hips. Exactly. But if it's less, then it means it's the other way around. It's the other so. way around. Good. So I think we are all on the same page, right? Good. Yeah. So this is A. Now, a paternal woman is 27 years old. It was her second labor. Delivery was full term. Normal cost. On the third day, of postpartum period, the body temperature rose to what 36.6. Heart rate 72, BP 120, 80, mammary glands are moderately swollen, nipples are clean, abdomen is soft and painless, fundus of the uterus is three fingers below the umbilicus. Okay, the lochia are bloody and moderate. What is the most popular? guys? This is a normal physiological course, isn't it? It's normal. Everything about the Usman is normal. Everything is normal. So there's no new cause for alarm. So this is what? A physiological cause of what? Postpartum birth period. Everybody that give birth will go through this sort of uh, involution, if I should put it that way. So this is what? D. So you can find more of these on our Medent website, medentweb.com. I will put a link in the description so that at the end, you can just check it out to solve more questions and practice more. So let's continue. A 40-year-old patient suffers from influenza. Influenza. On the fifth day of the illness, there, there are pain behind the sternum, cough with sputum, inertness, temperature is 39.5, face is pale, mucosa of the conjunctivus, and the pharynx is hyperemic. Heart rate is 120, breathing is 38. This is quite high. Now, in the lower lung segment, certain of the percussion sound and the moist rails can be detected. What additional investigation should be performed, first of all, to specify the diagnosis? Guys, what is the most useful tool if you want to check for any heart pathology? I said heart. Give me two. Please, anyone? Echo. Come again. Echo. Echo. Yes, for heart. Echo and what? ECG. ECG. Thank you. What about lungs? X-ray. And over here, we... Good. 
Now, over here, we are having a case of what? A lung pathology. So if you want to do additional investigation, what will you do? Of course, you go in for what? For your x-ray or your lung x-ray, as simple as ABCD. This one, don't confuse yourself. All right. A 45-year-old patient complains of body temperature up to 40 degrees, general weakness, headache, painfulness, and spastic uh, muscle contraction around, around the wound in the shin. He received this wound five days ago when working in his garden. He requested no medical care back then. Guys, what are you talking about? He requested no medical care back then. What infection is there? Tetanus. Tetanus. So what should he have done? Back then, what should we have done for this person? Oxide. Yes, we should have given, yes. ATS. In short, just give ATS. <laughs> as simple as that. So we say anytime you're having any sort of a, 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 a trauma, if you're not sure of your, 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 how do you call it? ATS status or your uh, sorry, your vaccination status, please just give it and go away. It won't kill the person. It won't kill the person. That's why it's D. It won't kill the person. Just give. All right. So that's why it's D. Titanos. Thank you. A 60 year old woman started feeling weakness, vertigo, rapid fatigability during the last year. Recently, they have been dyspnea and Parastasia observed. The skin and the mucous membranes are pale and ecteric. Lingua papilla are smoothing out. Liver and the spleen are situated at the edge of the coastal arc. HB is 70. Eutrocyte is 1.7. Color index is 1.2. Microcyte. What drug can be prescribed? First of all, what are you thinking about? What index are you looking at? I mean, <laughs> what parameter will you look at in this whole question? Come again. Vitamin B12. Vitamin B12. But what color index? Color index, exactly. The problem we're looking out for is, is the color index. And having a color index of more than one is a sign that vitamin B12 is deficient. And that's why the cells become big. And what's the function of function of the vitamin B12? It helps in what? In differentiation of cells. So when cells are not differentiated, they become big. They grow poof, 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 poof. Uh -huh. So that's what we're having over here. So over here, we are having what? A vitamin what? B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 deficiency. So the answer is yes, what? It's B. Sorry. It's E. It's E. Don't confuse yourself. Anemia is there, of course. But then what is the cause of the anemia? It's the vitamin B12. Vitamin B12. All right. A 34 year old patient complains of profuse sweating at night. Profuse sweating at night. Skin itching. Weight loss. Look at the weight loss 9 kg within the last three months. Examination revealed malnutrition. Skin pallor. Palpation of the neck and inguinal areas revealed a dense elastic node of about one centimeter in diameter. It is non mobile. That means it doesn't move. Non adherent to the skin. What is the most probable? diagnosis what is the most probable diagnosis so over here the clue we are looking at for here is the presence of the dense elastic lymph node which makes this a lymphogranulomatosis a lymphogranulomatosis lymphogranulomatosis why like i said because of the presence of this big lymph node that is what I mean, this dense uh, lymph node that is what present. Although much information was not what given to us, like for example, the presence of uh, the stem back cell, because usually with uh, lymphogranomatosis, you see or you hear of red stem back uh, cells and things like that. But unfortunately, they didn't mention some of uh, these things to help us or to easily make us diagnose our client. But then, this is what uh, lymphogranulomatosis. Just put that back of your mind. Put that back of your mind. So over here, we're looking at what? At B as our answer. B. Of course, 
It is also known as Hopkins. Let me just add it up. Hopkins disease. Hopkins disease. Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Not Hopkins. Hopkins disease. All right. Good. A 37 year old woman complains of having a sensation of esophageal compression. Now, this question is going to, to Juma because you were asking this question a lot the last time. So, Juma, look at it carefully. A 37 year old woman complains of having a sensation of esophageal compression. There's palpitation, there's breathing difficulty when eating solid food, occasional vomiting with a full mouth, wet pillow sign at night for the last six months. Temperature is 39. Height is 168. Weight is that. Heart rate is this. Blah. X-ray reveals. Look at it. X-ray reveals a considerable dilatation of the esophagus and its constriction in the cardinal part. In the cardinal part, what pathology is most likely to have caused dysphagia in this patient? That means difficulty swallowing in this patient. What are you looking at for? Dr. Juma? Cardiac alkalasia. Come again? Cardiac alkalasia. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you know why I called you, right? Yesterday, yeah. you were talking about it. I mean, yeah. the last time you were talking about it. Good. So, we are talking about what? Uh, Achalasia of the cardiac part or cardiac achalasia, as simple as ABCD. As simple as ABCD. All right. So, here is what? It's E. Here is E. All right. Aba. So, uh, but here they were talking about just like solid food. You see, this is why I have to lash you. This this, this thing that you have not been watching the videos. Now we've established this thing long time ago. We've established this thing long time ago. It doesn't really now don't confuse um uh how do I put it? Now don't confuse now the, the fact that there's uh, uh, only solid food and thing that doesn't mean anything. I mean it's good to know it. But always add additionally, if there's weight loss, if there is a, how do you call it? If, if, if there is a, how do, how do you call it? Self? The X-ray examination, always look out for all of these things. Now in, in, in autophagic carcinosis, which I think that's what you are thinking about, in autophagic carcinosis, there is a, what you call, a marginal filling defect, which are what? Ill-defined. Which are ill-defined. That means the... the the edges are not really smooth. The edges are not smooth along the what esophagus, and that will be an indication for what esophageal carcinoma. If that's what you're thinking about, okay. But this is completely different. Look at the X-ray. That's why I underlined the X-ray for you. That it revealed a considerable dilatation of the esophagus and its constriction in the cardinal part. In the cardinal part. Okay, great. So over here, we are looking at what? At E. In cancer 2, you will see a significant weight loss. Don't forget that. A 25-year-old man complains of pain in the lower third of his left thigh. Lower third of his left thigh, which occurs both with and without exertion. Occurs both with and without exertion. Possibility of trauma is denied. Okay. Objectively, the skin color is normal. Pastosity and pain can be detected with, Sorry. with deep palpation. The new joint mobility is reduced. Look at the x-ray. Gosh, that's sorry. Look at the x-ray. X-ray of distal femoral metaphysis shows an increase Shows an area of what? Distraction. Shows an area of what? Distraction and what? And speculi. Or speculi. Blood test. Immature cells. Immature cells. There's no sign of inflammation. So if you are thinking of automolitis, please just throw it away. Now we have what? Immature cells. Immature cells are signs of what? Who can tell me? Immature cells are signs of what? My myeloma. Multiple myeloma. It's Multiple what? Myeloma. myeloma. Don't forget, immature cells. Cancer. 
cancer, cancer. <laughs> immature cells, like you want to laugh. No, 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 no. So don't forget that. Don't forget that. Remember this question. Good. So that's what we are looking at for. So we're looking at the possible what cancer. Of course, myeloma is also another form of what cancer, but that is of a protein origin in a way. Do you understand me? It's of a protein origin in a way. So over here, we are looking at what? At osteogenic sarcoma. Osteogenic sarcoma. And that's over here. Your answer is C, JJ or JJ Lee. Mm -hmm. All right. So answer is C. 37 year old woman complains of a sharp pain in her external genitalia. Edema of the vulva, edema of the vulva lips. Pain when walking. Pain when walking. Guys, so when we talk about the vulva lips, that's the, like the majora. Those majora, labia, majora, labi. Hey, what am I saying? Am I correct? Yeah, 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 majora. Pain when walking. Body temperature is 38.7. Rate is 98 per minute. Now, inside the right vulva lip, that is the, my, my, uh, the labia, there is dense, painful, tumor-like growth of this in size. Skin and mucosa of the external genitalia are hyperemic, cupuous, foul-smelling discharge. This can only be what? An infection. Uh -huh. This can only be what? An infection. So don't go to be thinking of what? Ca uh, a cancer. Because cancer does not really, really discharges a, 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 a pass or, you know, things like this. So you are thinking of a problem with what? With an infection. So you are thinking of a problem with an infection. That's over here. You are looking at what? At acute patholinitis. As simple as that. The ladies know this one very well. They know it. Am I right? They know it. All right. So this is what? This is C. <laughs> this is, and again, it's occurring at the vulva area or the labia area or the lips, please. Why not right. acute vulvovaginitis? Acute what? Vulvovaginitis. This is not a problem with vagina. This is, no problem. This is a problem with the vulva, the lips. What covers the vagina? Okay. That's what the problem is. And actually, there is a gland. That gland is called the Boutilin's gland. This gland is found at the, at the lips or inside the lips. Uh-huh. So, and it is easily, or it can easily get what? Inflamed. Or it can easily get infected. Let me put it that way. So, this is C, please. All right. Now, in a rural healthcare area, there is a case of child dying during the first month of his life. First month. Now, to analyze this situation, among other measures, an expert assessment of medical records is performed. What medical documents should be considered first of all? Should be considered first of all. So definitely, this is what we call what? A neonatal what? death. Or a newborn death. Which occurs when a baby dies during the first 28 days of life. The first 28 days of life. And most neonatal death happen in the first week after birth. But definitely, what are we going to go in for? We're going to go in for what? For the child development record or history. Child development what? History. So that's what we're going to what? We are going to be looking at for. So B. 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 All right. Examination of a placenta revealed a defect. Placenta, there is what a defect. An obstetrician performed a manual investigation of the uterine cavity. There's a uterine massage. Prophylaxis. Now, when you say prophylaxis, it means sort of what? Prevention measure. Okay. Now, pro prophylaxis of endometriitis. Guys, you remember what we talk about endometriitis, right? Inflammation in the inner lining of the what? The uterus, isn't it? Endometriitis. Different from endometriosis. Uh huh. Don't get me confused. So now we have what a prophylaxis of endometriitis in the postpartum period should involve the following action. So what are going to give to prevent infection, guys? What will you give? Antibacterial. Antibacteria. Yeah. Your answer is what? Antibacteria. All right. 
A 15-year-old boy has developed pain in the area of his left knee joint. Left knee joint. Okay. A thigh soft, objectively, thigh soft tissues is thigh soft tissues in the painful area are infiltrated. It is what? Infiltrated. Infiltrated. Joint function is reduced. X-ray. There's a focus of this. Again, focus of distraction in the left distal femoral metastasis. Doesn't this thing look familiar to you? Now, with peristium detachment and formation of Codman triangle in the bone cortical layer at the margin of the defect. Chest x-ray revealed numerous microfocal met metastasis. What metastasis? What pathology is most likely to cause this presentation? Again, does this look familiar to you? It doesn't, Dr. Bader. They're not the same. Come again? It is familiar. It is familiar. <laughs> this is still oh, osteogenic oh, sarcoma. Oh, it's the same osteogenic okay. sarcoma. Please don't get confused. Now, don't get confused with airway sarcoma. In airway sarcoma, they will tell you that there is a presence of what we call an onion skin type of what? Peristium reaction. True. An onion skin type of... It's, it's a discriminant that they can never take it out of it. So please, take note of some of these things. Take note, don't confuse with them. Because some of them might be thinking of what? Airway sarcoma, which... Also, it's also a, a cancer of the bone in a way. Okay, but just slight, slight, slight differences. You should be able to pick them out of it and be free. So this is what osteogenic, osteogenic sarcoma, osteogenic sarcoma. All right. 